Vandals toppled light stands and speakers. They destroyed tents and booths and set fire to a dozen parked tractor trailers. People are screaming, crying, screaming people's names, looking for people. They didn't know where to go, who to look for. Bloodthirsty maniacs trying to kill me. Uh, as best as we know, it is under control. Very confused, very chaotic. In 1969, the world's most famous concert ever was held in Woodstock, New York. I am, of course, talking about Woodstock 1969. Headliners including a now infamous performance by Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> After success of a reunion show back in 1994, promoters decided it would be a good idea to celebrate a 30-year anniversary five years later. So, they began planning for Woodstock 99. Original Woodstock Festival was billed as three days of peace and music. It's 1999 reincarnation? Not so much. But unfortunately, due to poor planning on everything, all hell broke loose. And to say that Woodstock 99 would be remembered as one of the world's biggest failures would be an understatement. In fact, three deaths were reported as well as several sexual assault cases, rape cases, and more than a thousand people were treated in the medic station. You see, the original idea for Woodstock was quickly lost. But if Altamont was the day that the 60s died, Woodstock 99 may have been the weekend that the 90s died. Oh. Instead of the concert being held in Woodstock, New York, just like the original two concerts, the show was actually going to be held in Rome, New York, nearly three hours away. The festival itself actually being held on an abandoned Air Force space. Okay. So instead of being at a dairy farm, yeah, like the first Woodstock, it's at this military base. Ooh. So, you so can... the vibe is already a little bit yeah, darker. It's that <laughs> vibe. The idea being that the fence around the perimeter would serve as a peace wall. The peace wall was meant to keep out anybody that didn't have a ticket to the show, which is a pretty ironic statement if you ask me. To me, the first red flag about the concert is the fact that it's being held at an Air Force base. Those aren't meant for concert festivals. The Offspring even reported that they played a venue that was built by Nazis several times, and even that was better than the Air Force base. But think about it. Bases need landing strips. Landing strips are made of asphalt, and asphalt absorbs the sun's heat, especially in the summertime. It's pretty red. People became dehydrated very quickly and people quickly began to overheat. But with an obvious issue like that, the promoters definitely planned for it, right? No, sir. I guess the promoters just didn't think to hang up some sort of shady area for the concert goers. But to combat the summer's heat, water was available for $4 per bottle. But a free option was available. Well, kinda. The free option had a very, very long line. People would wait in line for hours to fill up their tiny bottle with hot water. And it wasn't long before people began to use the water for bathing due to the shower option being, well, Disgusting. And the only thing to separate the showering guys from the showering girls was a curtain down the middle. And trust me guys, no curtain is strong enough to hold back some perv from a showering woman. Just the thought of that just makes me so uncomfortable. Needless to say, it didn't take long for people to get angry and break open the water pipes, flooding the nearby campgrounds. The festival's promoters did order more than 2,000 toilets to be used at the festival. However, nobody took care of them. After the first day of the festival, the porter potties then began to overflow. This caused a massive puddle of mud and feces to form outside of the porta potties. And several of the brilliant young minds over at Woodstock 99 saw this massive mud puddle and decided to have a field day. They began to roll around in human feces, throwing it at each other, some people even eating it. The worst part of this thought is the fact that the showers sucked there, so you know that for the rest of the weekend these people were walking around with human poop and mud all over their bodies. I did see people covered in that. Thought that was pretty strange, not a thing I would normally see where I come from. I just know that if I walked past a porta potty that was stuck in a massive brown puddle, the last thing I would want to do is go and play with it, let alone eat it. I mean, I avoid porta potties at all costs though. Will you sing with me? That's the spirit I was looking for. Upon arriving to the festival, it was very obvious how poorly managed the whole festival was. The artist Moby was set to perform months in advance. However, when he arrived to the festival, his name wasn't on the list. And he was rightfully pissed. Another thing that wasn't managed very well was the food. Customers weren't allowed to bring their own food, but a slice of pizza will cost you 12 bucks. A frozen burrito, 10 bucks. However, for some reason, beer and water were all $4 a piece. 
and prices like that are even ridiculous in the year 2022. So I can't imagine how people were feeling in the year 1999. So take heat and hanger and mix it with alcohol and see what happens. That's a recipe for disaster. Oh, and I forgot to tell you who was headlining the festival. The headliners included Corn, Metallica, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Limp Bizkit. With the following that new metal, metal, and sometimes punk rock has, I really would want nothing to do with this festival. I don't want to exploit anybody like that because Let's just say new metal at the time was very edgy and angry. Um, I mean, straight up Limp Biscuit's biggest hit was Break Stuff, a song literally about being pissed off so you go and you break stuff. How many people here ever woke up one morning and just decided it wasn't one of those days and you're gonna break some shit? So taking these people that already have a bunch of built up rage and exploiting them like this, well, that led to their downfall. Let's start a riot. Woodstock 99, the riots. Don't worry guys, we're gonna come back to that a little bit later. 